Today we're doing another loading and shooting video with 10mm on the Lyman Spark T turret press and that's coming up next year on Jesse B Outdoors Reloading. Welcome back everybody and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment down below if you like videos like this. So what we're doing today is making some 10mm up on the Lyman Sparty turret press here. What we're going to do is our normal, we're going to make up 20 rounds, take them outside and shoot them. What we're going to shoot them in today is, is my Smith & Wesson M&P 10mm. I finally got it back from the factory and this is going to be the first video that I shoot it in since I got it back so we're kind of testing that out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you in and show you the components. The powder that I'm using in this isn't a conventional 10 millimeter, but what I'm doing is a bunch of videos in one day, and I didn't feel like changing out the power powder, so I picked a load, and that's what we're going with today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, as you can see right here, we'll get the glare off it. For powder, we're using HP 38 today. What we're using is, is we're just a tad bit off of the max load at 6.3 grains. Is this gonna be a heavy 10 millimeter load? absolutely not this is probably going to be like a regular factory round that you pick up off the shelf which is pretty much a lame round but like i said i'm doing a bunch of videos in a row most of them call for this powder so that's what we're using in this video then for brass what we are going to use is mixed range brass here this is the 40 smith and wesson i made in the last video that you guys saw so now we're doing this this is all blazer brass and federal mixed and it's small pistol primer and we're running Subversio primers in them and then for our bullets we are using what i casted up here the lee 401 175 truncated cone I'd like to thank missouri bullet company for sending the lead out that we made these bullets with there will be a discount code down below for you guys for missouri bullet company and that's all the components so let's get started reloading all right, once again, we are using the RCBS dies with a Lee factory crimp die on the end. In my last video, I had these set up for 40 Smith & Wesson. I made the adjustments to it to do 10 millimeter. So let's make our first round up. And as always, I am going to walk you guys through it for the people who are new, just in case they don't know. This first one is the sizing and depriming die. Of course, because I already have my primers in, I took the decapping pin out. So we're going to size it right there. We're going to move it to the next one. This is the expanding die. I have a bad time showing people what expanding does. If you have just the uh, brass right out of the uh, sizing die, sorry, I had a brain fart, the bullet will not go down into it. So what we need to do is expand it to get the bullet to fit down into it. So now we got it expanded. And this is very crucial for lead bullets, powder coated or uh, high tech coated to get that bullet to sit down in there just like that so you don't shave any of the lead powder coating or high tech coating off. You need it to be belled just like that. So now what we're going to do is move this to the seating die. This is a seating and crimp die, but I only got it set up for seating because I do crimping on the next one. So I'm actually going to do a powder charge here real quick. Zero out my case on here. Make sure this is where I want it. And we're dead on to where I want it. So now we're going to sit this in here. Get our bullet. Set our bullet on the case. Run it up there and seat it. And then we got our Lee Factory crimp die. We are going to crimp it. And there is our 10 millimeter round right there. I actually got my barrel right here out of my 10 millimeter Smith & Wesson. Drop that right in. It should drop right out, which it did. Drop it back in. Always spin it to make sure that the bullet's not in the rifling. And it's not. So, let's keep reloading. So, let's load these up here. And if you follow the channel, you know we talk about stuff. And what I want to talk about first is my Smith & Wesson M&P 10mm. If you guys don't know what happened to that, I'll leave a card up above for you guys to check the video where I was testing out Subversio primers like we're using today. And I had a red dot on my gun and it flew off and it flew off because the uh, threads pulled right out of the slide. The threads for the slide were actually still 
in the threads of the screws and it went flying off and uh, I got a hold of Smith and Wesson and uh, they actually gave me a return slip to send it back and I don't know if they fixed it or if they gave me a new slide I thought it was my old slide but I'm not real sure so what we're gonna do in this video is this is the first video that we're gonna shoot it in since I had it back now these rounds here are not gonna test it because they're not gonna be heavy rounds like I normally shoot normally when I do 10 millimeter I either use uh, accurate number nine if I want really hot rounds or I use a uh, power pistol and then sometimes I also use long shot those will get a 10 millimeter up and moving like I said here this would probably be like a I don't know a high-end 40 Smith & Wesson it's not gonna be ooh, that was a rough one it's not gonna be as slow as a 40 but it ain't gonna be like what 10 millimeter should be when I do 10 millimeter like it should be I definitely use accurate number nine I've always wanted to try blue dot out but I've been looking for blue dot for two years now and nobody local to me has it and uh, basically every time I ask if anybody's seen it they laugh at me I know you can buy it online but I refuse to pay a hazmat fee so I will not buy online um, the only online place I buy from is Republic Ammunition but that's because they're local to me and they'll let me go down there and buy stuff that's the only reason why I use them but even my local gun stores nobody has seen it in like two years uh, Heath at Republic Ammunition he's even said that he's tried to get it but his distributors who he gets his stuff from they don't have it so he can't get his hands on it either he uh, said him and Gene both a Gene reloading from the hot pot works down there and uh, they both are going to let me know if they get, ever get any in. But because of that, I just use the accurate number 9. And I stick with that for the spicy rounds. That's the only one I can think of without a max charge that I can get this bullet here up over 1,200 feet per second. Now I think the original, I could be wrong, correct me down in the bottom. The original FBI load was actually a... 200 grain this is actually comes out to about 180 with a mixture i use but i think it's a 200 grain bullet at uh 1200 feet per second if i'm wrong on that go ahead and put it down below sometimes i forget my numbers and stuff <laughs> just like uh in my uh 145 colt uh video with unique i screwed up the skeeter load thinking it was uh nine grains and uh walter kindly corrected me in the bottom that it, nine grains was a little bit over what a skeeter load was <laughs> like i said sometimes i just forget i don't remember exact numbers off hands that's why usually i don't talk that much about history unless i'm sure about it on here but we'll get this uh two more rounds made up here and that would give us 10 rounds and then we'll do the normal change the camera angle because I know you guys like seeing presses work at different angles here I do really enjoy reloading and shooting 10 millimeter um, if you guys don't know I know everybody that follows my channel knows but I got a muscle disease so when I shoot something like 10 millimeter or anything with hot rounds I can't shoot a lot of rounds because it starts bugging my hands so normally when I do 10 millimeter videos I only shoot about 50 rounds because that's about all I can handle. If I ever do two videos in a day with 10 millimeter, you could usually tell the second video because I start shooting like crap. Or I should say I start shooting even more crappier than what I normally do. People say I'm hard on myself about my shooting, but I can do that. But let's go ahead and switch up these camera angles. All right, now we'll do the last 10 at this angle here. So let me know down below. Do you guys enjoy this loading and uh, shooting series I'm doing? Because I plan on keeping it up as long as you guys like watching it. And what I'll end up doing is, is we'll end up doing it with uh, different rounds, different presses, stuff like that. 
I've also got my Lee Classic turret press we could do these vid videos with. Um, nobody's picked up my Lee Loadmaster yet, so I still have that. Of course, I got this. This one's going in kind of hard. There we go. I don't know why. Every once in a while, we got some uh, something like that. Uh, my father-in-law also has a single stage. I've never seen a really close-up of it. I just know it's green. So it's either a Redding or a RCBS press. And uh, he don't use it right now. He has a Hornady uh, AP press, the full progressive one that he uses. So I'm sure he'll let me borrow that if I want to do videos with it. Just like he's letting me use this uh, Lyman press for these videos. And then I'm filming this on the December, the Friday before Christmas. And I just ordered my Dylan 550C. So we're going to have videos like that. I'll be doing a bunch of videos with that. But if you guys like these load and shoot videos, let me know and we'll get a bunch of different presses out and we'll keep doing them as long as you guys like watching them. I can tell you right now, I like making them. So if you guys say, yep, go ahead and keep doing them, I'm going to keep doing them because it's not like a drag. Some videos that I do, I'll tell you guys on here, on my main channel, I do cleaning videos. People like gun cleaning videos. I absolutely hate filming and editing <laughs> gun cleaning videos, but since you guys like watching them, I do them. To me, videos like this is more enjoyable. I like uh, doing uh, product reviews on my main channel of different products, and we're going to start doing that on here too. I'm going to start doing uh, reviews of reloading products on here. I've just had too much fun reloading, and with it being winter time, Man, I don't know why some of these are hard. But with it being winter time, there's probably going to be more loading videos than anything coming out. But just like these uh, RCBS dies here, I'm just getting these out and starting to use them because I'm going to put these on my Dillon tool heads when I get my Dillon. And I wanted to try them out before my Dillon got here. So far, I have used the 357 in my 357 non Magnum video. I'll leave a card up above for you guys to check that out. And uh, we've already used this die set in the 40. And now we're using 10 millimeter because they're the same dies. You just got to adjust them. Um, yesterday, my boy and I was in the town north of here where I live in northwest Ohio. And uh, we got a farm store there. And they had these RCBS dies and 45 ACP. So I picked those up. And I already got 380 and 9 millimeter here. So the only one I had to get was 45 Colt. Well, when I ordered my Dillon, the place I ordered it from had those dies. So I ordered those with the press. So now I've got every caliber in the RCBS dies, the carbide anyways, for everything once my 45 Colts come here except for 223 um i'm gonna start loading 223 i got everything to do it the reason why i don't do it is because i don't shoot much rifle that's why you haven't seen any videos on it yet um i don't know about being comfortable with it i'm sure i'll be fine because i do all these pistol rounds and i do shotgun rounds which we haven't got no shotgun videos on here yet so we got to get doing those but uh What's your guys' opinion? I got a set of Lee 223 dies. And uh, I think they're just full length, if I remember. But now I'm watching videos and I'm seeing this uh, small base. And I'm trying to figure all that out. Because I've got two ARs. And it sounds like the small base dies are better for semi-autos. So I'm thinking of getting RCBS dies for the small base. Leave a comment down below if you shoot an AR or if you shoot a bolt action. And which ones do you use? Because I still probably wouldn't mind getting a bolt action too. 
or if I do get a bolt action, maybe I'll get a 308, so it gives me another caliber, and then I'll have to buy everything all over again, but that's how it goes. But leave that comment down below, and we already only have two rounds left to load up here, and I am on the seating die, so we'll pop these up here. And I don't know why some of these are rough like that and other ones aren't. All my bullets are sized. I sized all these. So I don't think it would be that. So we got the last round again. So let's do this for the new reloader. So we'll go through it. We're going to size it. Then we're going to expand it. Then we're going to pull it out here and get our powder charge. We got our powder charge right there. Then we're going to put our bullet on there. And we're going to seat the bullet. And we're going to crimp the bullet. And right there is our last round of 10 millimeter. Now let's take it outside and shoot them. Now we're outside with the 20 rounds of 10 millimeter we loaded up. This is the first shots of this gun since I got it back from Smith & Wesson. If you guys don't follow the channel, I'll leave a card up above. I actually had a dot fly off of this gun stripped the threads out in the slide and I had to send it back to Smith & Wesson. So these will be the first shots since that. And now I'm going to turn my dot on. I just did a rough bore sight with it with a bore sighter, laser bore sighter. So if the dot don't work, I'll go back to the backup irons. So let's see what we did. There is a couple of marks on the targets from a previous video. I didn't paint them. You're still going to be able to tell where I hit. This is the first time I'm shooting 10 millimeter with the HP 38. This is a max charge, not giving you my uh, case overall length or anything on this one. If I did in the inside video, I don't remember because I'm doing this about two weeks after I made that. So let's go for the MGM gong and I'm using the green dot. Sorry, I had a delivery vehicle go by and I stopped to look to see what they were doing. All right, MGM gong. All right, we hit that. Let's go for the big silly. All right, looks like it's shooting a little bit low to the dot, but I can handle it. MGM. All right, small silhouette. Let's try the big silhouette on the front. All right, that small plate in my last video was shooting a 40 Smith & Wesson I made up. I knocked the plate off the hook, forgot to put it back up. Hit, it. hit that with no problem. Let's try the bowling. Ooh, looked like we just nailed, nicked it. There, we nailed it real good. All right, let's go to the MGM popper. All right, shot all those just fine. The red dot seems to be fine too. That's an issue I'm going to keep a watch on in this video, but we only got one more magazine. Let's try it out. All right, let's shoot this last magazine here, a 10 millimeter we made up. Let's go for the MGM popper. Man, once I get this dot adjusted, it's going to be beautiful. Let's try the 6-inch. Nice. MGM Coyote in the head. Ooh. There we go. Uh, let's try the bowling pin again. Alright, knock the snot out of him. Uh, let's end up on the small silhouette. Alright, and all those fired just fine. Let me give you my final thoughts. So, what's my final thoughts of the 10 millimeter that we made up with the HP 38? Those 20 rounds shot just fine. Shot pretty good. That is the first time I've shot that load in this. It is nothing like too drastic. HP 38 is not a high powered powder for 10 millimeter. But I just wanted to go a little bit mild to test this red dot out. This is a green dot. It's a Zulusi Owl that they sent out to the channel for me to check out. I like the red dot and that's originally what I had on here that flew off was the red one. They sent me a green one to try out and this is the only gun I got with a doctor cut anymore. So I kind of delayed my video on it to make sure it's going to work in this video. So that'll be coming up on my next video. As for the 10 millimeter, the loading and shooting, had a lot of fun. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. So as always, don't forget to check the links out down below. Down there I have links to Axel Hearing Protection, Gators Eyewear, and a bunch of other companies I like dealing with. Some of them got discount codes to save you guys money. 
others are affiliated accounts that do help out the channel. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Leave a comment down below. We are One Nation Under God, and I'll see you all on the next one.